Hey, Greg, I just noticed that that building over there, that house, has already uh, got uh, felt, paper on, felt paper on it. She even felted? Oh, man. Oh, we're going slow, dude. We're going really slow. Anyway, yes, yesterday we had rain day, so no work done here. Pretty muddy on site, but good news is the roof has dried out. We are going to be installing the uh, panels on the other side that we have. We can go about 40 or so feet down this roof before we run out of panels. The rest of them are being produced at metal sales. There's a shortage of black 26 gauge metal, I guess. So we're going to do what we can, get as much of this covered as we can because we've only got another day before we turn back into another rainy weather pattern. And Greg is going to be out of town. He's leaving. He's going to a wedding out of state. So it's just going to be me. You can, you can tell him I just quit. I'll probably tell him I fired your ass, actually. Yeah, you could do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've got our first panel on. And uh, when we did the other side, some of the social media questions were, why do you guys not run a full panel? Like, this is a half panel. It's actually 9 and 5 eighths. So these panels are fully measured at 16 inches. And it's because we have to do this bend up. And this bend up is necessary because, as you can see, this side is floppy. There's nothing to fasten this down. So that bend up with this rake cleat trim, those two together will get another piece of trim that will lock all this down. And I'll show you that. In order to put that bend up in, we had to cut a panel down. And in order to cut a panel down, we calculated the distance for the entire roof. The extra was whatever it was, 19 and a quarter. So we cut that in half and put a nine and five eighths piece on both sides. All right, since we don't have all the panels we need to finish this roof, we're just going to time lapse this out. But let's go inside, check on the plumber, see what his progress is, and see how he's coming along in preparation for our concrete floors. Uh, you got a Spectra? Yeah. And what, what do you think about that Spectra? They're trash, dude. They're trash. So, would you say that you think this to be a little lot better? Absolutely. Looks like you guys got a nice uh, trench drain in here. Right on. So tomorrow we're gonna to do uh, uh, the insulation in here. Then insulation. Are you you back here tomorrow? The garage will be 100 percent tomorrow. Well, I don't know if we get the tubing in yet since we got the uh, that to do over there, but insulation will be done. Nice. That's pretty darn close. Right there. Yo, what up guys? Good morning. So Monday morning, you can see we got the sun rise here behind us. It's, uh, it's a pretty nice one. Anyway, uh, I just got to site 720 and it always work out in the morning so I don't get here too early. But look at this. We got concrete trucks. Cause we got a slab going in the garage. These guys don't mess around. Ooh. This is kind of a kind of an issue. We got a little frost this morning. Shouldn't be a problem. Back here. We'll make that work. 
Yeah, nice. It's the little things, you know. Yeah. I'm back. My old lady always does. This morning, as you can hear, behind me here is a mini excavator fired up and digging footings for the porch that is where we're standing. This is all gonna be porch, and uh, what that means is our concrete guy is getting started on that part of the project, and we need to do a little detail work to make our job a little bit easier instead of waiting to do it later, and that is sealing uh, the bottom edge. So right here, where the weather logic meets the um, concrete, we kept it up, so there is a little bit of a gap here, but now we're gonna go ahead and use a product to seal off that edge so that moisture, rain, blowing, or anything like that can't work its way into this gap. We do have a gasket seal underneath our grade board. If you remember, uh, it's a black foam that expands to all those cracks. But this is gonna be another layer of protection. This is a SEGA tape. It's pretty cool because not only uh, does it stick to the weather logic really well, but it also, it really sticks to the concrete. Greg and I just did a little section over here and it's pretty awesome. So I feel real good about that. That's what we're gonna work on. It's kind of a fibery, I don't know. It's kind of like a fiber material. I don't know if you can really see that. It kind of forms the contours of the concrete real well. So what we ended up doing was scoring a scribe line at inch and seven eighths. That way all this tape can be on a nice level surface to the sheeting and it makes this a lot easier. So I can just kind of watch it go right on my line. And the reason that, that line, that scribe line is important is because when we go to put on the bottom half, whenever you're bending around an edge, if this line is not straight, this can get really weird and then get really crappy. I'm just really impressed with how good this sticks, dude. Yeah, to the concrete. Like, it sticks to the concrete. Like better better to, the concrete. to the concrete. I agree. Yeah, it sticks better to the concrete than it does. The... I know that little scribe line is probably a little bit of a pain, but it does make it... Like yeah, it does. Now that we've got this Sega tape on, we've got a nice seal between the concrete and our wall. Uh, otherwise, this is a spot where, you know, it could be troublesome. You could get wind-driven rain, you could get air, and that's kind of the big thing here is we're preventing any air from coming up here. We've already got our wall sealed off with the tape and the uh, integrated panel, the LP Weather Logic, but this is kind of a final detail here at the foundation. So um, once that's done, we can feel real good about it. In order to stay ahead of the concrete, guys, we're gonna go ahead and run our base trim for our Versetta Stone. The importance of that is that that is perfectly level. We're gonna overhang the sheathing about a half of an inch and, um, and get that all set up with the Stabila. Well, here, here's a piece of the trim. So you can kind of see it's got a groove in it. That's what the stone sits in. And uh, it's got weep holes, so the water won't sit in there, just the stone. But we're gonna set this with a nice little half inch overhang. And that's what our first row of Versetta stone will set in. So I'm gonna go get this set up so we're on the right grade and we'll start shooting this off. So I got this receiver set at zero. So in order to, so this is at zero, which is an inch lower than finished house floor, which means we're gonna be a half inch automatically I'm going to move this three and a half that's total three and a half total three and a half yeah then this this little lip here so actually then four inches a little lip a quarter inch okay so this total thing is three and a half yep so imagine that we are down an inch but we want it only down a half inch we're gonna go four inches right because my if you want to go off the top of this guy yeah well that's what we're gonna probably do right and I think that's fine yes I think that's fine I mean we can also hit this so that's a quarter inch taller? Mm -hmm. So three quarters so three, of an inch. Three and a quarter, yeah, three. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up three quarters of an inch. Yeah, good. Yeah, I think we're good. So now using the receiver, all these pieces of trim, the base trim should be a half inch lower than finished floor. Uh, and that's what's gonna give us kind of an overlap here and not allow any water to go back there. Uh, that does get into that weep hole here on the bottom of the trim 
it's not going to work its way. What is that noise? What is that? Fertilizer. One of those big fat tired fertilizer. No, it's just a. Oh, it is a fertilizer buggy. That's Brock. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's Brock. That's my brother in law. Okay, I think I'm gonna opt for putting screws in this trim, just so when you hit that nail, it works good, but I'm afraid it's gonna move this trim ever so slightly when we go to uh, nail it, and it might move it off of our laser. So we're just gonna go ahead and place screws. These work out pretty good anyway. Okay, so now that we have this all fastened, it wouldn't be very good if we just left it like this because water coming down the backside of our stone could go back here and then or kind of void this whole water screen purpose. So we're gonna have to seal tape the top of this trim, which is what we'll do next. Nice, dude. All right, this is, uh, this is gonna be ready for stone now. Yeah. Cool, does that mean it's lunchtime? I'm just gonna go ahead and arbitrarily go, I'm just gonna go uh, 40 inches. No reason, just that's what I'm doing. Okay, you good? That's what I love about LP Lodge, like when you snap a line on it, it's a crisp, hey. clean, straight line. Why don't you say that again, but say it to my chest. <laughs> I said. <laughs> so now the only point for this reference line is just that, it's a reference. We wanna make sure that we've always got something that is a level line based off of that laser shot starter trim. And that, that line is what we will use to confirm our rows are staying level. Sometimes when you're running out stone, it can get a little bit off and you don't want that to happen. Now, good thing is we're only gonna be running four rows of Versetta stone, they're eight inch pieces. So four sets of eight inch at 32 inch plus a four inch cap will bring us up to the top of our wainscoat and we're just gonna make sure that that stays really nice and level. Now, unfortunately, we don't have power to power up our saw today. So all we're gonna do today is get started by running this first course of stone and uh, that's really the hard part. Once we get the first row done, it goes pretty darn quick. And even then, I wouldn't say the first row is that hard. Would you, Greg? No. No. Nothing. Make sure it's in your groove. Feels like it. Okay. I mean. Well, we don't want to go too far. It's probably, probably want this that end, guy. This, this end more exposed than this end. Because this back edge, I don't think we want that exposed versus this end is kind of painted. I kind of agree with you on that. So and like that? Our groove will match up too. There. So this is a cast stone product. It gets poured into a form. The crazy thing about this though, and I've talked about this product before, we've used it a lot. We really do like it for this application. Each one of these panels are hand painted in a factory by a person, not a robot, which is crazy to me still to this day. Now, this is where the reference line comes into play. What I like to do is just check, and that's where I should be is 32 inches, you know, within a 16th or something. I don't want to get too far off, but within 32 inches, or I should be at 32 inches from the top of this panel to my reference line.
All right, so now a lot of times people will make a comment about the Versetta Stone, how they don't like the corners. And you know, I would say if you focus on the corner itself, yes, it is too bad they don't have like a piece of wrap around that you know, comes around to this area and then you dye another piece in. But I also think that that would cause maybe more of an issue because you would have this corner that always wrapped around unless you did staggered corner pieces, like maybe a quarter, a quarter piece, a three quarter piece, a half. But I think logistically that becomes a problem uh, shipping those pieces. Right now they come in these packs of two, they ship real nice, they stay, you know, unbroken most of the time. So honestly, when you do a whole wall, your eye never really goes to the corner uh, because it really does look, it really does look pretty nice um, in my opinion. So, you know, we just try to do the best we can to match up the corners so that they look as clean as possible. And Greg, do you know where my tape measure went? I like to start with a, the first row with a full piece and then I come back with like a quarter or a half or something like that. I don't like to go to a three quarter and have so much of a stair step. So after running this quarter piece, then we'll run one out to here just to kind of break up the jag a little bit. Uh, even though it probably doesn't matter, when you step back, you're hardly ever gonna see any of the joints. It does a really good job of disappearing on its own. Oh, my pencil too. Yes. Nice. So you can already start to see how you lose, you lose the staggers. I mean, you start to even lose where they're at. And uh, that's, I think, where Versetta Stone really excels in this market is their ability to really make a wall just kind of look so realistic. All right, so we're on the last row already. Um, we literally haven't been putting a whole lot of time into this. And we're right back to, this is where sometimes, as you can see, Maybe, you actually can't see this. Um, we're gonna have to do a little bit of tweaking. I'm gonna have to grind off a little bit. So we're gonna try a different piece first. Cause sometimes if one doesn't work and you don't like it, just grab another one and you might get lucky. Okay, see how this is what I'm talking about. Nice. Okay, so now that I got the corner built up, looks, looks pretty good. You know, it's not perfect. Like we said, it's it's not perfect, but it, it, it is a good looking corner from a distance. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's 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 no, decent. Really yeah. I mean, we're always the most critical of ourselves. And me putting everything up on social media, I become even more critical when in reality it's gonna be just fine. I don't know what the time was because we were pulled away a few times, talked to the customer, talked to the concrete contractor. But this is easy, man. We just whip this out in no time. Obviously, we don't have to cut around anything at this point. We've now got a cap to put on. We won't do that right now. It's the end of the day. Got a little bit of cleanup to do. We'll be back here tomorrow. So this is pretty cool. We can finally start to see the porch layout, how this is gonna be. So here in the middle of the building. You know, eventually there's gonna be windows, there's gonna be doors, and there's gonna be this awesome wraparound porch that goes all the way around, and it bumps out here 16 foot deep, and it comes all the way 32 foot across, and then it goes back in. So the majority of the porch is gonna be 10 foot, you know, sticking out 10 foot from the build. But here in the middle, it's gonna be even bigger. So I'm pretty excited to see that. They got the footings all done, Tomorrow they'll set the walls, get those poured, and then it'll be ready for a porch cap. It'll be a concrete cap.
How far can your uh, boom reach? Uh, 100 feet. Like 100 footer? Yeah. All right, so this is the height that we are going to be running the Versetta Stone. It's four panels, 32 inches, plus the four inch here. It gets us about 36 inches. I think it's a good height. If you go another round of the stone plus this, you'd be up here. And it just, I think, is a little bit too tall, in my opinion. And obviously, my opinion only matters for what it's worth. So now we've got this cap that we're going to install. And um, I think it's a nice little obviously addition. I think it looks nice. And it's gonna go on just like the Versetta Stone. There's a uh, tongue and groove keyway here that's on the back side, And that's gonna sit right in the top last panel. And we're just gonna line these up. But we're gonna also take a little bit extra care to make sure that they're running as straight as possible. So just to try to ensure that they're as straight as possible. And, and that's nice too, we're level. We're just gonna kind of continue to run a uh, level across multiple pieces just to try to avoid any of this because we're gonna be installing a piece of flashing over top of this that our smart side will come down to and that way all the water will go out over the top of this. So what I'm gonna do is same as the, the, uh, the stone, I'm just gonna kinda temporarily place this with screws. And that's so I can kinda manipulate it as I go. I mean, that's perfectly level right there. That's pretty dang good. Cool, so, I mean, that's, that's as easy as this stuff is. I mean, that just took Greg and I like 10 minutes. It's important to note though that we did spend, you know, considerable time as we did every row, making sure that we were always consistent on our reference line that we made off of our base trim at the very beginning. That allows us to come through, put these capstones on with relative ease and, I mean, with pretty good, you know, quote unquote perfection with the 70, I think this is a 76 inch, a 78 inch um, Stabila here, consistently running nice and level. All right, so this is the detail for the stone. We've got the Versetta stone, the Versetta stone wainscoat cap. We've got this aluminum transition piece that we bent up on our metal brake. And then we've got a flashing tape flashed back to the, uh, the Weather Logic. Now this is gonna get a, um, a water screen. So we're gonna apply a water screen over top of this. That's what our siding will be applied to. And then that's gonna provide a place behind the siding uh, to dry out and if moisture does make its way back there, which it probably will at some point, um, it can work its way down out over the stone. If by chance moisture gets behind the stone, the Versetta stone has its own built-in water screen that is gonna take it down to that piece of base trim we installed with those weep poles that is also flashed back to the weather logic. And that's gonna allow all the moisture to make its way, you know, out of the building wall assembly here and obviously that's the main goal. We're on the north side, but really all sides of the building. You don't want moisture staying behind your siding because remember, this is just a facade. So these aren't meant to be waterproof. You want them to be resistant to the everyday rain, but wind-driven rains, moisture, condensation, that's gonna make its way behind your siding and you want to be protected um, on the back side. So obviously the integrated panel the flashings, the proper um, channels for water to make its way away from your building is key. Um, it's nice to finally get some color up on the building, start seeing some details. Uh, this wall here is the only wall that we can actually keep working on because of our window and door issue. So we're missing those. Those won't be in for a while yet. And we're going to keep moving forward. Concrete's been getting done, uh, which will allow us to get on the inside, start doing some interior details as much as we can. And um, yeah, you know what? We just gotta keep making progress, keep moving forward. And we still have uh, a bunch of stuff we can do, so stick around. 
don't go anywhere. Hit that subscribe button if this is something you're interested in because we got a long ways to go on this Barn Dominium. It's gonna be an awesome build. I can't wait to show you guys the porches. Uh, seeing those walls getting done up front right now really gets me excited for that. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot to this build and we're gonna take you through all of it. So hope you come around for the journey. We'll catch you guys later. So there you go, as we look inside, you can see they got the trowel there, they're still working on it. It's uh, finishing up real nice though. Garage over there, they just got done cutting and uh, it's gonna be really nice. No basement. Yeah, there's no basement on this one. Um, we could do a basement. A lot of people always ask that question, can you guys put a basement in a post frame? Yeah, no problem, we could do that. I mean, it adds some complexity, but it's totally doable. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. This is as far as we can go right now. Once these concrete guys kind of wrap up their things around the doorways, we can start putting in some doors. We have two garage doors we can install. That'll allow us to finish the garage doors, the overhead doors in the garages, and then um, we can run all the siding and stone around those. So moving forward.